Konnichiwa, Japan fans. In today's show, we are going to continue with part two of our selling year in, year out. So let's get going. This is the fourth year of the Sales Japan series podcast. We are broadcasting around the world from the Beverly Hills of Japan, Minato-ku, here in downtown Tokyo. It is chic central. One day, you may, if you're not living here, be able to travel here. It'll come. I'm your host, Dr. Greg Story, your corporate coaching and training guy committed to your success. I'm the president of Dale, can you train Japan, the best-selling author, Japan Sales Mastery and Japan Business Mastery, and my new book, Japan Presentations Mastery, were ready early this year. Now, in this podcast, I want to help you to survive COVID-19. Don't forget to subscribe and share this podcast with your family, friends, and colleagues. We are not being sponsored by Libsyn, but we value your privacy, which is why we have our podcast hosted by Libsyn. Unlike many other hosting organizations, Libsyn have a strict policy that doesn't allow access to your private information by anyone. Here is our daily podcast lineup on iTunes. Mondays, the Cutting Edge Japan Business Show. Tuesday, the Presentation Japan Series. Every second Tuesday, the Business Touches in No Oshia Show. Wednesday is the Sales Japan Series. Thursdays, the Leadership Japan Series. And every second Thursday, the Business Pro Podcast Show. Friday is the Japan Business Mastery Show. And Saturday is Japan's top business interviews. Now, this is episode number 221. And this is part two of Selling Year In, Year Out. In part one, we talked about Jan Carlson's insights into the importance of consistent service being provided to clients. The buyer mantra is no like and trust in sales. We also talked about the basics of sales, prospecting and closing. Now, are we going to continue the errors, shortcomings and mistakes of last year into the new year or not? Are we going to just continue doing what we have always done year in, year out, or are we going to improve? We tend to get into a groove in sales, which is perfectly fine if it is the correct groove. We start again this year, but are we adding years of experience in sales, or are we just duplicating the same dubious experience of last year? We have to make the decision that we are going to become better in all aspects of the basics of selling and build a professional career. As mentioned in part one, a big element of sales success revolves around our communication skills. These days, it is made even more difficult because we are probably doing all of this while selling remotely. How do you like someone you have never met before in person and only interact with on a small screen during an online call. In this environment, what we say and how we say it become vital. Did you know that we lose about 20% of our pep when we're on screen? We have to lift our energy just to get back to parity let alone start to impress the client with our energy and passion to serve them. You will have noticed what dead dogs a lot of people are when on screen. They are lifeless and low power. If you are the buyer, they are probably not the type of person you want taking care of your business. You want a powerhouse who will run through brick walls for you, who will leap tall buildings in a single bound to do the best deal. Someone will take a bullet for you on the pricing. This means the same old, same old year in, year out sales boogie doesn't function properly and we will lose the customer and the sale. We have to refine our on-screen communication skills further just to tread water in order to stay where we are right now. These are the new basics of sales. However, are salespeople leaping out of bed ready for the day 
And seeing it as a new day in sales requires a set of different skills from last year. How are we doing with understanding and mastering the new basics for this coming year? Understanding clients seems to be the most obvious basic skill, but that is a rarity. You have to wonder, how could that be the case? In Japan, the reason is simple. The communication flow is one way. The seller is trying to convince the buyer to buy. To do that, they trot out their widget catalogue and describe it in vast detail. The problem with this no questions asked approach is you don't know enough information. Does the buyer need that widget in pink or blue? Waxing lyrical about the bountiful aspects and many wonderful attributes of your blue widget is ridiculous and pointless because the buyer needs the widget in pink. You need to know that. And the way to find out is to ask the buyer questions rather than blindly pitching into the dark. Find out more when we come back from the break. Our show today is brought to you by our public courses, but we also do custom in-house programs, do them live online, do them in our super safe classroom, do them in English, we do them in Japanese. Today's program is sponsored by, on the 29th of January in our professional leadership series, Building Subordinates Potential. Also on the 29th, Build Trust, Credibility and Respect. And on the, sec- oh, sorry, on the 5th of February, in our professional leadership series, we're doing communication skills for different personality types. Get my best-selling books, Japan Sales Mastery. This is the Bible for selling in Japan. And Japan Business Mastery. Both are available on Amazon. My new book, Japan Presentation Mastery, ready early this year. Check out our website, enjapan.dalekunning.com. If you like learning by watching videos, we've got over a thousand for you there at Japan Dale Kunning TV on YouTube. We release three TV shows every week on YouTube. The Cutting Edge Japan Business Show, there's a premiere. Business Show in Japan comes every Monday. Fridays, you have the Japan Business Mastery Show. And Sundays, we release Japan's top business interviews. This is where I interview leaders from SMEs all the way up to the corporate captains of an industry on one topic, leading in Japan. Every second Thursday, we release the Business Pro Telebi Show. You can email me at greg.story at dalecunningy.com. Welcome back. The Japanese client is a problem too. Over time, they have trained salespeople to offer up their pitch so that they can cut it to shreds. They do it this way. In order to satisfy themselves, this is a low-risk purchase. They prefer the smash the wall nut with a sledgehammer approach. Risk aversion is fair enough, and nobody wants to make an incorrect purchase or waste resources. Pitching is a total waste. However, salespeople and buyers haven't woken up to that fact yet. A Japanese salesman who came to see me promptly sat down and immediately went through his entire slide deck, adding his commentary. He didn't ask me one teensy-weensy question about my business or what was the problem I was trying to fix. I teach sales, so I was amazed. I wonder how long it would be before he would ask me a question. Well, he didn't. He just pitched and pitched and pitched. We wasted 25 minutes of that meeting going through stuff of no value or interest to me, the buyer. I wanted pink, but he kept talking about blue the whole time. If he had taken a few moments to ask me some questions, he could have zeroed in on the two slides which were pertinent to me in that whole massive deck. We could have had a much more meaningful and fruitful conversation He didn't get the sale, and no wonder. Whether we are selling online or selling when person-to-person, we need to ask questions. Japan being Japan, 
We need that mezzanine step of first getting permission to ask questions, and that is not difficult. Are you or your colleagues asking for permission? Salespeople in Japan need to start the new year with a new realization that pitching is inefficient and basically self-defeating. Let's start the new year reflecting on the true basics of selling. Then we can put these basics into practice in order to get the results we need. The equivalent of football blocking and tackling is what we need in sales. If we salespeople don't get it, then this will be another year of opportunity which has slipped by, eluding our grasp. We simply cannot afford that year-in, year-out business anymore. Thank you for joining the Sales Japan series. If you found the program useful, and please work on your karma and share it with your family, friends, and colleagues. Don't forget to subscribe and share this podcast. Immediately apply what you learn, go out there and survive. Remember, I'm your corporate coaching and training guy. I'm in your corner, committed to your success here in Nippon. <music>